Hope you guys enjoy you guys like that intro you guys see that these guys see the intro it's a pretty cool intro right <laughs> there's I, I i have i put together more <coughs> i put together a little more uh that'll come later on that was uh a little teaser for the thing we're gonna talk about i is good thank you thank you guys thank you yeah 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 i can edit yeah i can i can i can put things together yeah you know no big deal <laughs> all right it's time for story time baby so this is my welcome to the story time where Akenshi adventures. So the first thing that I noticed in the Philippines, we walk out into the airport and oh my god, I'm already sweating. <laughs> so this is weather today in the Philippines. It was like 90 degrees with a humidity at 92%. And then these are screenshots I took from the weather app on my phone. It feels like 101%, 61% humidity. 97%, 70% humidity, bro. <laughs> and you know what's crazy? As we're driving around Manila, I see people wearing long sleeves, long pants some people were in hoodies some people were in jackets i'm out here with a short sleeve shirt and shorts <laughs> and i'm still dying <laughs> another thing i noticed when i first got into the philippines is that there are malls everywhere you know how america has like a mcdonald's or like a starbucks around every other corner the philippines is like that but with malls and the malls come equipped with ac so sometimes what people will do is they'll just walk into the mall and sit down <laughs> to escape the heat. <laughs> I thought that was crazy. <laughs> As I'm driving through uh, the Manila, which is the capital of the Philippines, I noticed that like everybody walking around is Filipino. You know how like if you're driving around in America, it's like a melting pot of cultures. Like, you can see people from, like, every walk of life. As I'm driving around Manila, I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> Everyone here is Filipino as fuck. <laughs> there is no diversity in the slightest. I visited the Philippines during rainy season. I believe every time I visit the Philippines is during rainy season. But it's, like, raining every single without fail it was rain for like an hour each day and i'm not complaining because i actually do love the rain for me the sound of rain is like comforting but in the philippines rain hits differently when rain falls it's like it sounds like there's static everywhere like if you're sitting in one of the rooms and rain is falling on the house it just sounds like a, a TV that switched to the wrong channel. <laughs> Those are my first impressions. Now we have another little intro video about Manila. Uh, because that is the first place we visited. We stayed in Manila initially for about three days. So here we go. Another uh, video trailer. Hope you guys enjoy it.
So that was a little intro to Manila. <clears throat> AJ fastest drinker. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> AJ drinking again. Don't phrase it like that. <laughs> I I don't drink too often. It was just a special occasion, you know. <laughs> Manila was our first stop. Uh, it was a I think all in all 20 hours of travel because from the US to Taiwan because we had a layover in Taiwan US to Taiwan is about 13 hour flight in Taiwan we had about a three hour layover and then from Taiwan to the Philippines about an hour and a half so you would assume that the moment I step inside the Philippines I would immediately go right to bed right <laughs> wrong we got there at 12 30 in the afternoon <laughs> Which is like prime things to do stuff. So off the rip, we already started meeting family. I met my uh, my mom's side of the family, uh, and it's my aunt and uh, and one of my cousins. They told you they don't respect you because you're American. No, that's not true. I actually did pass for a Filipino, except every single time someone tried to talk to me, it was you always in Tagalog. To <laughs> and I had to have this awkward like stage where I had to decide if I could pretend to understand them or I just straight up tell them that I speak English. <laughs> And the looks on their faces every single time I decided to go that, oh, I only speak English route, they were shocked. <laughs> they were caught so off guard. Why are there a lot of cocks and chicks? Okay, so the cocks and chicks are actually taken from uh, my grandparents' house. They built a house in Manila and they actually ran a little farm, or run a little farm there. So all the, all the chickens and then the fish that you saw, that was all on their property. <laughs> anyway, our first stop was a wet market. If you guys don't know what a wet market is, it's like an open air market where you pick out like raw seafood. And then with that raw seafood, you can bring it to the restaurant and they'll actually like cook it for you. So it's like, here's some crabs we picked out. I think we picked out like crabs, scallops, and like shrimp. We were always at a restaurant. It's like every four hours we would be visiting a restaurant. <laughs> I met with one of my cousins. And uh, we got to talking about video games. He's a big, he, he, he's super into video games. Uh, we would talk about Spider-Man, Call of Duty. I asked him what game he's currently playing the most at the moment. And his answer was quite literally the one game that I could not talk about. <laughs> I asked him, hey, what kind of video games are you playing right now? Do you play like Valorant or like League of Legends or shit like that? He says Fortnite. And I'm like, no. <laughs> I can't talk about Fortnite. I played season two and three of Fortnite, and then everyone got too good at building. <laughs> and then I had, to, I had, to, I, I couldn't, I couldn't do it anymore. But yeah, it was really cool. There you stream. Yes, it came up in conversation a lot. <laughs> and the thing is, I don't know how Magda and dudes found me, but nobody knew what Twitch was over there. Because apparently the biggest streaming platforms are YouTube and Facebook Live. <laughs> the more we talked, you know, the, the conversation about like me, me streaming was brought up. <laughs> and he said, oh, you stream? I'm like, yeah, I do. He's like, oh man, I run like a YouTube channel. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, no way. That's so cool. <laughs> he shows me his YouTube channel. He has more subscribers than me, dog. <laughs> I'm not even the biggest YouTuber in the family. <laughs> He's like, he showed me, he showed me like, a, he, he posts a lot of like Fortnite clips and shorts and stuff. And his like, his highest short got like 76k views. <laughs> and like all the rest of his shorts got around like 10k. <laughs> and I'm like, oh man, that's so awesome for you. <laughs> Anyway, uh, first couple days were spent in Manila. I spent time in my uh, grandparents' home, and these are their dogs. It's like the family dogs. This is Ghost, and then this is Nala, and they were both adorable. I loved them to death. Nala was hella slobbery, though. <laughs> if you sit on the ground in front of Nala, it's like over for you, because she will just start licking you to death. But the first couple days were pretty chill. For the most part, we just try to recover, and then we were off to my dad's hometown, which is located in a... It's like a broad term. I'm gonna use the term Ifugao. There were a lot of locations that we visited in Ifugao, and it was honestly a really cool place. So it's where my dad grew up. It's where his parents grew up. Uh, it's where all my aunts and uncles grew up. So without further ado, here's Ifugao.
So that is ultimately around the area that my dad grew up in. So we were connecting with his side of the family. Uh, and as you guys saw, we were celebrating uh, both my uncle's 25th year wedding anniversary, as well as my grandparents' 50th year wedding anniversary. And that was held at the family farm. You have a farm? Yes. So this is my uncle's farm. He is the second oldest brother, but he's got like a lot of properties in this farm. They farm fish and then there's like farm hands working. This is also where they breed the chickens and then I believe they also have some other crops growing here. But yeah, we drove to Ifugao. The Ifugao territory, you have to drive up a big ass mountain. Uh, you guys were able to see it a little bit in the videos. It's like a six hour drive through the mountains and it is so disorienting. Driving up the mountain were long winding, winding roads. I still can't talk. You could not go straight for more than three seconds. I don't usually get motion sick in cars, but holy shit, dude. I wanted to throw up. <laughs> so at the wedding, it was like a wedding anniversary that we were celebrating as well as something called a uh, Honga. I think my cousins were explaining that think of it as Thanksgiving in America. You're celebrating like friends and family. So Ifugao culture, where my dad is from, uh, they were one of three tribes of the Philippines, one of three or one of four, uh, that were not conquered by the Spaniards. So we have a lot of old traditions that are still celebrated to this day. One of the traditions being sacrificing, you know, like pigs and caribou, caribou, caribou. There were 12 pigs on the farm and two caribou. They were basically sacrificed in front of everybody there. <laughs> there were about 600 people there, but oh my God. <laughs> they, they sacrificed that shit in front of me. And, and for a split second, I'm like, Pfft. Am I vegan? <laughs> so the pigs, they'll actually put the pigs into like plastic bags and they will hand them out to the family members. However, not everybody gets the parts of the pig. <laughs> if you receive a part of the pig, you are considered to be in good favor and good standing with the family. <laughs> and then if you don't get one, well, better luck next year. <laughs> Although, yes, of course, I did I did feel bad for the animals. I took videos of them doing it, but I decided not to show them out of respect. Also because they're a little gruesome. So. <laughs> but yeah, the wedding anniversary went well. It was awesome. I, I had to give a little speech about my grandparents, and I gave a banger speech. I'm not gonna lie. I made some people tear up. No big deal. <laughs> Although, holy shit, I was so nervous. <laughs> I'm always so bad at public speaking. Sauce the speech. I had, I had it written down. A streamer, if it doesn't like speaking, this is different. <laughs> this is the speech I gave. This is how the speech went. Ahem. Hello, everyone. <laughs> My name's AJ. I'm the oldest son of Lloyd. Uh, as you can probably tell, I am not from here. I was born and raised in America. Ever since I was a baby, you two are looking after me. You two talking about my grandparents. My parents would bring me here to the Philippines from time to time from a young age, and I would be greeted with open arms every time. It did not matter that I was born in an entirely different country. I could still feel how much they loved me, even when we were miles and miles apart. You are some of the most kind and caring people I have had the pleasure of having in my life. Not only did they raise their own children with love and care, they also put that same love and care to raising their grandchildren. They lead by example and inspire me every day to be better, reach new heights, and love everybody around me. Their undying support for me gives me the motivation to live my life to the fullest, and I would not be the person I am today without them. Thank you for all that you have done for me, all the strength that you have given me, and all the love you have bestowed upon me. I will be forever honored to be one of your grandchildren. Congratulations on your 50 years of marriage, and here's to many more. Mahal kita. Boom. 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 I know. I know. I know. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. <laughs> so yeah, that was the speech I gave. <laughs> I came up with that shit the morning of. <laughs> they were like, you're doing a speech. I'm like, what? <laughs> and so I was just, I took up my phone like, <laughs> and then at the farm, we, I met my cousin. His name is Uski, or that's his nickname. After 10 years of not seeing each other. Now, the thing between me and Uski is that as children, we did not get along in the slightest. Every time I would come visit the Philippines, I went like, ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> I gotta see Oski again? No. He's gonna take my Game Boy without asking. Ah. Oh. <laughs> 
hated each other. <laughs> um, but as we grew older, we actually uh, got along a lot better, I believe. So the 10 years ago, when I last visited, I think we were around like 13 at the time. It was like when Attack on Titan Season 1 first came out. And so we actually watched the first season of Attack on Titan. And you want to know what's crazy? That was like 10, 11 years ago. The anime is still not over. <laughs> We used Attack on Titan to gauge how long we've seen each other. But we get along really well now. Uh, me and him both pretty much grew into the same person. Hang on. It's kind of funny because he and I both grew up and like our body builds are like the same thing. <laughs> like we look the exact same in terms of how our bodies are structured. <laughs> So this is, we have another Josh. This one's also Josh, who's also the tallest in the family. I believe he's like close to six feet tall. And like, where were those jeans when I was born? Hello. <laughs> but this is me. This is Aski. This is the youngest uh, cousin. Her name is Kali. And then this one is Aiden. Uh, we got along together really, really well nowadays, which I'm so glad. He's honestly uh, super cool. Uh, and I'm glad that we were able to, uh, to bury the hatchet, you know? <laughs> After the celebrations of the wedding anniversary, Asuki comes up to me and he says, The cousins want to see you drunk. <laughs> and I'm like, no. <laughs> How drunk are we talking? <laughs> He introduced me to our other cousins. He introduced me to some of his friends. Bro, they had me start drinking at 3 p.m. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> As I met the, uh, the friends in the family, they were all telling me how they start drinking at 3 p.m. and they like finish up at like 6 a.m. <laughs> and I'm like, I'll try to go for as long as I can. But I'm telling you right now, I don't think I can make it till 6 a.m. <laughs> and I couldn't. But it ended up happening. I was drinking with everyone. I was talking with everyone. And uh, we, we they, they had a karaoke machine on site. And so everyone got drunk, started drinking karaoke. I played their version of a quote-unquote drinking game. But realistically, all it was is you pour a shot, you drink it, you pass the shot to the person on your right. <laughs> And you just keep going. <laughs> that was their version of a drinking game. So this right here, I know it's a blurry ass picture. I was, I got so drunk that when I took this picture, I thought it was clear. This is like Ifu Gao Jin. Guess how much this bottle costs. I said 20 bucks about. I said about $20, at least a dollar, $5, 20, 60 pesos. This bottle is like $2 maximum. <laughs> And I'm like, what? That's so cheap. How, how is it that cheap? And I later figured out why. It's because this bottle was made with no regard to human safety. They were giving me warnings about, about drinking this gin. They told me to take a shot and then immediately follow up with water as like a chaser. And like here, when I drink, I don't usually do chasers because like I can tolerate the taste of alcohol. And I thought the chaser would be meant to, you know, wash out the taste. Because it was, it was pretty fucking strong, but it wasn't strong enough for me to need the chaser. And so I took the first shot, did not take the chaser. All my cousins looked at each other. <laughs> They're like, you should probably take the chaser. <laughs> and it's not to mask the taste, but it's because you would get so severely dehydrated from drinking this. Because I think they were telling me it's like a hundred proof. So it's like, you're going to get so dehydrated and you're not going to last. So eventually I did end up taking the chasers. Uh, and then again, we were singing karaoke. I sang My Way <laughs> from Frank Sinatra for the song. The cousins told me I, I did really well. After I got done, I sat back down. The cousins were like, hey, that was good job. Good job. Don't sing that in the city, though. I said, why? <laughs> If you sing that in the city, you're gonna get beat up. <laughs> because apparently, in the city, so many people sing My Way from Frank Sinatra that people are sick of hearing it. <laughs> Not only that, but people will get into fights if others steal their song. <laughs> and I'm like, whoa. <laughs> Thank you for letting me know. <laughs> and around 7.30 p.m.-ish, that's when the gin snuck up on me. It hit me like a truck out of nowhere. <laughs> like with drinking, I typically pace myself. I say, okay, it's like, I'm getting, I'm getting to my point. I'm going to stop. Right. And for the longest time I was chilling. And then all of a sudden I went, <laughs> what the fuck just happened? 
I felt so disoriented out of nowhere. I thought that my cousins were all talk because I could tell that everybody was drunk. And like when I get drunk with my friends here in America, I can typically tell at what point in the night that everyone's sort of like done drinking and everyone's gonna pass out soon. Because we start at like, I don't know, maybe 11 p.m. and we'll go until 3 a.m. And when my cousins told me they're gonna go all the way till 6 a.m., I thought they were all talk. I'm like, there's no way you can start drinking at 3 p.m and still be alive by 6 a.m. I was so wrong. <laughs> I tapped out at 8.30 p.m. <laughs> I said, I can't do this, I'm going to bed. And everyone's like, no, 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 you gotta stay up, you gotta stay up. <laughs> and so I basically snuck out <laughs> back to like my sleeping area. I was fucking dying. And you know what's crazy? The next morning I woke up, I went back to like, cause it was all celebrating like under this tent in this area. And there were just people passed out in chairs or on tables. <laughs> And then I, I, I saw some of the, uh, the cousins that I was drinking with last night. He already had another beer locked and loaded. 6.30 in the morning. I'm like, did you sleep? And he's like, yeah, I slept for like three hours-ish. And he goes, we're gonna drink again tonight. Are you in? <laughs> no, I, I, I'm, I, I, I'm actually going somewhere else. <laughs> That's crazy. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> I ended up leaving the farm to go visit some other places at Ifugao, and they actually did it again. <laughs> they actually went back to back. AJ can't hang, you're damn right. Nope. So yeah, from there, uh, we exited the farm and we went to Lagawe, which is where my dad, that, that's like the town he grew up in. My dad, his parents, and siblings all grew up in Lagawe. Basically, my entire dad's side of the family went, all went to the same high school. And uh, so I visited the place where my dad went to high school, and it was honestly really cool. The, the flag waving thing and like the drum thing that was all taken from the high school. It was funny when we were walking through there because my aunt, my dad's sister, brought her boyfriend from Denmark there. And Filipinos, on average, they're maybe like 5'4"-ish. <laughs> Everyone at this high school would constantly be looking at my aunt's boyfriend. Because he's like a tall Danish guy. He's like easily over six feet tall. <laughs> and the kids were ruthless. <laughs> you know how it's like, if you're gonna look at someone, you give them like a quick glance and then quickly look away. You gotta give them the quick glance to confirm what your eyes are seeing. <laughs> the kids looked at him as they're walking by and like tracked him. <laughs> Eye contact for a solid 10 seconds. I felt so bad for him. <laughs> I would be shitting myself if they were doing that to me. <laughs> so we stayed at my uh, my uncle's house. He has a really big house. The house is so big to the point where I would get lost and not know where to go. Someone would be like, hey, find, find one of your cousins, tell him it's time to eat. I didn't know where to look, bro. <laughs> I would spend like 10 minutes just walking around the house trying to track him down. <laughs> the room I slept in was really nice, although it was infested with spiders. So all these little black specks that you see, like it's all spiders. They were just chilling on the ceiling. So like spider, 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 spider. <laughs> and they were all around the ceiling. I'm like, can I sleep like this? <laughs> I ended up making a pact with these spiders because the moment I first walked into the room, there were like seven mosquitoes flying around. And I'm like, I'm gonna do run in a little experiment. I closed the door and came back like an hour later. And sure enough, all the seven mosquitoes had been eaten by the spiders. But yeah, again, spider, spider. <laughs> Spider. <laughs> I I am one of those people where if I see like a spider in my room and I know that there's a spider in my room, it's like a little harder for me to sleep. So think about that 10 times the amount of spiders. <laughs> it was a little hard sleeping at first, but eventually I made peace with the spiders because I made a specific pact with them. If they cross the ceiling threshold onto the wall, onto the floor, or onto my bed, it was on sight, bro. <laughs> Uh, and then from Lagawe, we ended up going to a place called Banawe. So in the video, you guys saw like the uh, the rice terraces. And fun fact about those uh, those rice terraces, it was actually where the ending of uh, Avengers Infinity War was shot. You know the scene where Thanos is like looking over like a, a grateful, like a peaceful world or whatever? That was taken here at Banawe. So this is the scene in question. 
I visited this place. <laughs> I thought that was so cool. That's such a fun fact. So like this, yeah, this this is this is the spot that I visited. This is Banawe. These are the rice terraces. It's honestly so breathtaking. But again, we have to drive up another mountain. Holy shit. <laughs> My motion sickness is once again not having it. But Banawe was super cool. And fun fact, this is actually where my aunt's boyfriend proposed to my aunt, <laughs> which we didn't learn till later on, but I thought that was really cool. Honestly, it was uh, it's a good place to do it. <laughs> I don't think there was much to say about Banawe other than other than the pictures, but like the pictures do not do it justice. It was so calm and tranquil in this area. I fucking loved it. It was just nice to sightsee. From Banawe, we went back to Manila. And we took a flight over to Palawan. And I think Palawan is probably the prettiest location by far. Not to say that these other locations weren't pretty. But I think this was probably my favorite part of the trip. So yeah, if you're ever in the Philippines, I would highly recommend you to go and try to visit Palawan because holy shit, <laughs> that place is beautiful. Like, uh, I, I haven't seen anything like that <laughs> ever in my life. It's just everything about it was so nice. And uh, at the resort we were staying at, it's like outside of peak vacation hours. So there was like no one staying there. Anyway, we did a lot at uh, at Palawan. We rode the ATVs as you saw in the video. And I think the ATVs were like 20 minutes for like 500 pesos, which is not a bad deal. Uh, the only thing was the instructors tried to explain to me in Tagalog how to ride the ATV. 
You know how I was saying earlier where I had to make the choice to either explain to people to explain it in English or nod along and try to pretend to understand them? This was one of those instances where I nodded along and tried to understand them. Honestly, it was so bad <laughs> because he kept, he, he was running me through how to start the ATV if it stops, how to like turn it on, how to drive it, how to steer it, how to accelerate it and whatnot. I was watching his hand signals the entire time and I winged it to the absolute maximum. They told us to drive it down all the way to the other end of the beach and then back, and that would be our 20 minutes. And so me, my cousins, uh, we drove down the beach. The only problem was along the beach, there were pockets of water where like the water would wash up onto the shore. And so we had to pass through these pockets of water. And at a certain point, every time we started passing through the pockets of water, our ATVs would erupt in steam <laughs> because we were on them for a pretty long time. Uh, they also told us that there's a speed limit that we should uh, that we should follow. We did not go the speed limit. <laughs> we went well above the speed limit. All of a sudden, one of my cousin's ATVs stopped working. <laughs> So we were all trying to get his ATV to start again, but failed miserably. What Uski ended up doing is he found a rope uh, that was washed up on the on the shore. We tied it to another ATV and we attempted to drive like that. <laughs> Unfortunately, the rope was not nearly strong enough to support that. <laughs> and so the instructor came along. He pretty much had to swap ATVs with my cousin. And you know, it was all fun and games. We were all we were all crowded around my cousin Josh, whose ATV stopped working. And we say, ha ha. <laughs> and then one by one, each and every single one of our ATVs stopped working. <laughs> we were driving back. Uski was in front of me. I was falling behind him. And all of a sudden, I noticed that Uski's ATV stopped. <laughs> I stopped beside him and I went, is everything okay? <laughs> He's like, mine stopped working. <laughs> I'm like, oh shit. I'll go back and tell them. I start driving back. I drive through one of the pockets of water. My ATV dies on the spot. <laughs> I'm like, no, <laughs> no, that didn't just happen to me, please. <laughs> and because my ATV is stuck in water, I have to push it out. <laughs> I pushed it out of the water. It was on top of wet sand and I had to push it up like a little, a little hill. <laughs> Thank God that I went to the gym because I would have been so embarrassed if one of the instructors came over and was like, what happened to you? <laughs> While my ATV is just sitting in water. <laughs> I was able to get it out and I was able to get it started again. But as I got closer, the end goal, mine stopped working. And so another instructor came over and, and swapped with me. And then the instructors later on said, yeah, the ATVs, they don't really work in water. <laughs> You told us to drive down to all the way to the end of the beach, and uh, we did. <laughs> so, uh, and then after Palawan, we went back to Manila. In Manila, we went to we went to one of the spas. Uh, we had a sauna, a full body scrub, and a massage. The sauna sucked ass. <laughs> I don't need to spend time in this sauna when the entire outside world of the Philippines is already a free sauna. <laughs> so we didn't stay in the sauna for too long, uh, but once we got out, we had like a whole body scrub. And when I say whole body, I mean whole body. <laughs> like they had us changed into like this disposable underwear and they got every nook and cranny <laughs> of my body. <laughs> I was like, I was not prepared for this dog. <laughs> and then after the full body scrub, they went into the massage. My massage person's name was, was Grace. And she goes, hello, sir. My name is Grace. This is my pressure. <laughs> it was like a hydraulic press <laughs> into my back. <laughs> and I went, oh. <laughs> But I didn't tell her to go easy because I honestly needed it. <laughs> when I go for massages, I'm fine with everywhere on my body except my feet. Every single time I go for a massage and they get to my like the feet area, oh my god. It takes every ounce of strength in my body to not erupt in like laughter. <laughs> because my feet are hella ticklish. <laughs> 
But from there, we went to do some shopping. Uh, we went to a place called the uh, Green Hills Mall. And it's basically a bunch of independent vendors. They sell clothing, bags. Uh, they sell electronics. Like, I got this pair of AirPods right here. These are AirPod Pros. Guess how much the AirPod Pros are? They were $45. <laughs> And at first, when I when I heard the price, I thought that they would be like fake. They're just like normal earbuds, just like shaped to look like AirPods. But I put them in my ear, and then all of a sudden, all the background noise from the mall ceased to exist. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> wait, they actually have the noise cancellation. <laughs> um, and then I then I like you know hold the stem, and then it transferred into the ambient noise mode, and all of a sudden I could hear anything. They're not like legit legit AirPods. They're enough to like get the job done. <laughs> like they sound good. They have noise cancellation. They have the ambient noise. Honestly, it was forty five dollars compared to how much however much they are here, like three hundred. After shopping on the final, we're, we're rounding towards the end of the trip. My uh, my cousins decided to take me uh, one last time around Manila. And uh, we visited Binondo, which is the world's oldest Chinatown. It's also where my, uh, my mom grew up. Uh, we sat on a hotel rooftop and we are all just like taking shots of tequila together. At the hotel rooftop bar, my, my flight, this was the night before my flight, by the way. I'm like, I don't want to get too drunk, but by the time we finished the bottle of tequila, I was like, I was fine. I could drink a little more because they asked me, they're like, are you good to go more? I'm like, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I regret saying yes so much <laughs> because immediately my cousin starts telling me about a bar located nearby where he did a drinking challenge. And if you do like these three shots and then chug a beer all under like a certain time limit, then the drinks are free. So he took us to that bar and I attempted the challenge. And holy shit. <laughs> so this was the first challenge they had me do. So it was first take the shot, two, snort the salt. <laughs> the salt burned like hell, three, lemon in the eye. <laughs> It was absolutely brutal. Lemon in the eye I thought would hurt more. The lemon in the eye was fine because like it happened and then you like wipe it out and then it's pretty much over. The thing that hurt the most was snorting the salt because <laughs> that shit lingered. Okay, so that was the first shot we took. The second shot we took was like um, they, they, they light the shot on fire. They sprinkle on cinnamon. You blow out the fire, drink the shot through the straw. <laughs> And I don't know what this part was. It's like you were supposed to like inhale the vapor of the shot or something. I have no idea. <laughs> I just like I just like blew into the cup or something. And then they pour the excess back into the shot glass. And then you take another shot. <laughs> and then you, you you finish it out. And then I think the la the last shot was just a normal a normal like shot. Uh, I forget what they gave us, but it was it was pretty standard. And then at the end they had us chug the beer. And I told everyone, or I told my cousins that in America, if you're going to chug a beer, then uh, you all get down on one knee uh, and then do it that way. And so they joined me in doing that. And then to finish off the night, I tried the street food in Bonondo and they had like all sorts of stuff. This was called Day Old Chick and it's quite literally a one day old chick that they just fry up and then you eat it like this. It basically just tasted like chicken. They had these like skewers and I think from here we tried, it was just beef fat on a skewer, which was pretty interesting. And then I also tried bolut for the first time ever. <laughs> Honestly, it wasn't that bad. So they were telling me how to eat the bolut. They told me to slurp the juices first. Yeah, I know I'm a fake Filipino. So you slurp the juice first. Then everything. And then you were supposed to like just pretty much inhale the whole thing and then they also told me to put some salt and then put some vinegar in it and then you just like drink more of the juice I was so confused by these instructions that they were giving me I snort the salt first yeah and then you, you snort the salt in there don't you Jen and then uh, it didn't come out of the shell so I just picked it out with my hands uh, oh my yeah. so like this, like all the feathers were still on it. And honestly, you like couldn't taste the feathers because they were like soft <laughs> enough. Just follow that. Follow that. It, it basically just tasted like, 
all that, all that. Hmm? I mean, that's put it in your mouth. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it honestly just tasted like a hard boiled egg. Just a really chewy, hard boiled egg. <laughs> So yeah, I'm grateful for my cousins to uh d for taking me through uh through Manila and trying the street food, because uh, a lot of the food that I was eating there was food that I've already tried before. It's just like better versions of it. Is this your first time trying it? That was my first time trying it. It was a really cool experience. I think that does it. That was all the adventures I had in the Philippines. We flew back the next day, and that concludes our our Philippine story time. Hope you guys enjoyed.